tell me plants are your personality without telling me plants are your personality. Hello my ghouls and goblins, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a plant inspired makeup look, a very specific plant, the Calathea family. The Calathea family, otherwise sometimes known as prayer plants, can also be mixed up with the Maranta species of plants, very often are beautiful shades of green and purple, thus the inspiration for this look today. Everything I use is cruelty free, there's, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Almost all of it is drugstore or drugstore price. So if you're interested to know how I got this look, then come and hang out with me and let's get on this journey together. Welcome to the floor, everyone. <laughs> we are upstairs in my living room again, just like I was in my declutter video. I wanted a change of pace. Plus I have a huge bay window in front of me, so a lot of natural light is coming in. I brought a couple of my plant friends over here to fill up space. So I believe this one is a Diffenbachia. Beautiful pink and green. This is actually my future husband's plant, but um, it's under my care, so it's basically my plant. It has one of its blooms about to get, need to get chopped off there. You can see that. Interesting bloom. It's like a little kind of like corn cobby, cattail-esque thing in there. And then we have a baby rubber plant. I love these guys. They're super easy to care for and have these just like really pretty variegated looking leaves. And they're fat and juicy leaves. I love them. Highly recommend these. Two plants, very easy to care for. But onto the makeup. I'm gonna speed through my base because it's nothing super special. I use a lot of the same products. I would like to see YouTubers use more of the same products over and over again. I think that kind of tells you that they like a product, that they trust a product. I understand too that a lot of people get PR so they have to go through things really quickly. Oopsies, thought I mute, muted that already. So for my primer as usual, e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. Hopefully you can't hear the shop vac. My future husband is cleaning out his truck. He works in construction, so he often has a lot of excess like dust and just particulate follow him around. And so he, it's like when you open his, his car door, it's like puffs of dust just come out. So he's cleaning it out because we're actually gonna go check out another wedding venue today. Then for foundation, we are just using the Yensa BC foundation in the shade light neutral with a damp beauty sponge. I don't know why I tend to just do one half of my face with foundation and then the other. I think I got used to doing that with my um, Holy Grail foundation, the Urban Decay Stay Naked foundation. That one dries down extremely fast, so you have to do half a face at a time. Otherwise, it's gonna be really streaky. Des, what are you eating? If you see my forearm looks a little wrinkled or shiny or discolored, I still have that second skin wrap on it um, that you may have seen in my tattoo day vlog. I should be able to take this off tomorrow night or Friday morning, but it's not my skin. <laughs> it's the second skin just kind of starting to peel away from my own skin. Concealer is same old, same old e.l.f. 16 hour wear camo concealer in medium peach. And then for blush today, we are going to be using a Phytosurgeon's Blush Balm in the shade Fume. I think this is one of their best sellers and it's clear to see why. It's, it's really like this beautiful dusty rose, almost mauve toned blush. I think it's breathtaking on so many skin tones. And the nice thing about this product is you can really build it up so you can add a lot of pigment or a little. You can see I like to do my blonde tour, of course. Phytosurgeons just launched. Oops. Oopsies, got a little heavy handed there. <laughs> Phytosurgeons just launched a new collection of their flash fluorescence eyeshadows. And I think it's a constellation collection, I think is what it is. And there's one in there that I've, I'm really eyeing. It's similar to their Fractal Freesia kind of formula. The collection is more of a sheer base with suspended glitter in it. I'm actually gonna be using Fractal Freesia today, so I'm excited. When it's time for me to reorder their Verdant Force Field moisturizer to hopefully also place an order for one of those new eyeshadows. All right, I'm just gonna blend out the edges there a little bit more where I feel like I got a little bit carried away. Setting the face as usual with the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder and then the e.l.f. HD Powder.
And then highlighter is my all-time favorite e.l.f. baked highlighter in Moonlight Pearls. And then again, just focusing this around the eye socket, the orbital bone area. I think it's orbitable. Orbital area. I don't think it's the occipital area. I could be wrong. I haven't checked my anatomy in a long time. And then also kind of in the inner corner there, the inner swoop of the eye and above the brows. Kind of just giving that healthy glow diffused all over the skin. Now I'm going to spray my face with the Pacifica Cherry Matte Setting Spray. I don't think I'm going to repurchase this. For it being a matte setting spray, it does have hyaluronic acid in it, so it will hopefully hydrate your face. But I honestly feel like it makes my skin look like too artificially shiny. And so like for a matte setting spray, that doesn't make any sense to me. Priming the eyes with the Ulta Matte Eye Primer. And then setting that primer again with the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. Now I'm going to brush through my brows. I don't really want to fill them in. I feel like I have to if I'm doing a look on YouTube. But you know what? I was planning on it and I really don't want to. And I think it should be more normalized that you don't do anything with your brows. I feel very lucky to have the brows that I do. So, um... <laughs> not gonna do anything sorry y'all but I was if I were gonna fill them in I've been trying to use a uh, brow gel before I fill in my brows I would always do it the other way around beforehand so like a pencil or a marker and then do a brow gel just to set everything in place and something that I've been trying is the opposite way so I would have used the elf wow brow and neutral brown first brush my brows in the way that I wanted them and this has fibers in it so it fills it out a little bit more as well and then whatever more sparse areas or places that I feel my brows need more shape. I would have used the Milani Precision Brow in medium brown to just fill it in. I feel like it makes my brows look less blocky that way. I tend to go overboard with pencils and markers in my <laughs> eyes. So yeah, but we're just gonna skip it today. Whatever, let's live wild. Now for the eyes, this is a Calathea or Calathea. I say Calathea. My old Oregonian ways die hard with saying my ass like that, except I say bag, beeg. Now, this is a Calathea inspired eye look, so lots of green and lots of purple. So the three palettes I'm going to be dipping into are ColourPop Gone Matte, ColourPop Sage the Day, and then Menagerie Cosmetics Flight Club palette. And I actually did a smart thing and took a picture. I've, this is, I made this look before just to see how I would like it. And I did the smart thing and took a picture of the palettes and then circled the colors that I used to help myself remember. <laughs> what order I did it in or just how I created the look. This is the Essence Silky Nude Eyeliner Pencil and you know the drill. I almost never use a darker color in my waterline. I always like to have my eyes look open and this is the best pencil I have ever tried for the inner corner yet. I've used the NYX, I think it was the Wonder Pencil years ago and then I've used White Eyeliner or the NYX Milk Jumbo Pencil. I've used the ColourPop Honey Dude Pencil before and this is just, this Essence one is the creamiest most pigmented, longest lasting that I have ever experienced thus far. All right, so first off, we're gonna start off building up two colors in the crease. These two from the Gone Matte palette, which are Pillow Fight and Big Hugs. They have a purple undertone, which will be very good to start with that purple shade because while purple and green are often paired together, you need to be careful with them because they can look muddy. Calathea have become my favorite plant species, I guess. I started with an Orbifolia, which is the one with the big fat green leaves. And then I think the next one I got was, I think the Satosa one, which I think, I don't know if that would be considered peacock. And then I did have a Calathea Dottie, which is like the rich purple leaves, but it got mealies, I think mealybugs which are those white fuzzy things. Even as try as hard as I might to quarantine it and fix it and treat it, it just died. So unfortunately, <laughs> had to let that one go. And then I also currently have a rattlesnake calathea, which is doing really well. It has new shoots popping up. One of the plants that's incorporated in my tattoo here. Gosh, how can I show this? Oh, this is, of course they're in places I can't show. It's hard to see because I can't rotate my arm further than this. 
but right there is the rattlesnake calathea. If you're wondering what the purple is, that's leftover stencil. It'll wash off when I'm able to take this off. Uh, this is a tattoo in progress. It's about over halfway done. I'm going back in in about a month to get it finished up. Something about this tone of shadow I really love. It's that like cool toned lavender, almost gray shade. For my skin tone, looks like a pretty nice, I wouldn't say natural shadow, but, but it is a nice shadow shade. And then these earrings, aren't these earrings cute? These were on my Etsy wish list for this past Christmas and my future husband's mom actually got them for me. They are made out of, I think, clay and they're super lightweight. The nice thing about having gauges like this is that when I want to wear dangly earrings or earrings that have a clasp versus a uh, like pin, I can just plop them through my, my gauges. If you're wondering why I call my partner, my future husband instead of fiance, it's one of those things where just like everybody has a word that they don't like, like a lot of people don't like the word moist or ointment. For me, it's creamy or treat. Like I hate those words for whatever reason. His word that he doesn't like is fiance. He says it just makes his skin kind of crawl. So to respect him, I'm calling him my future husband because he calls me his future wife or wifey. And so, yeah. I'm just using the shade Pillow Fight underneath my eyes here to continue building up the diffusion of that purple tone. But Calathea have become one of my favorite plants. A lot of people, I'm in a couple, <laughs> I feel like such an old lady now. I'm in a couple plant groups on social media, like on Facebook, and anytime anyone asks for help with caring for Calathea or somebody's new and it's just like, how do I care for this? People are like, throw it out, they're divas. They're awful. And I would agree, they're very particular. They love humidity, but not direct light because they are Amazonian floor plants. So they get a lot of humidity, but not a lot of direct light. But they also prefer like filtered water, not tap water. So what I end up doing is I fill my my watering pan, my watering can, and then just let it sit for a couple days. And then that oxidizes and releases a lot of the sediment, I guess, in the water into the air. I, besides that one that died due to a bug infestation, I have had amazing luck with Calathea. I think I think that's why they're one of my favorite plants because everyone says they're hard to care for and I'm like, that's like one of the only ones that I can get to like flourish. My Calathea setosa, I think that's what it is because I called it Setokaiba for a reason. I actually have two babies propagated from it and it's already pushing out more babies. <laughs> so I might have a forest of Calathea and I am damn okay with that. Now I'm going in with the shade Big Hugs on a rounded brush and then going further into my crease here and outer corner. I try to get plants that are non-toxic. I do have pets and that's always a worry of mine to have them eat something that would make them really sick. Luckily enough for me or unlucky for the plants, I don't know, my cat who's sitting right next to me who is pretending she can't hear me Anytime I'm literally like one minute late to feed her, she singles out my spider plants, which are, thank God, <laughs> thank Buddha, non-toxic. And it's kind of just similar to cat grass for them. She doesn't go after any of my other plants. The only other plant that she goes after is my future husband's ponytail palm, which is also non-toxic and has similar um, fronds and leaf structure to a spider plant. She doesn't go after any of my other plants but there's this poor pup, a poor, poor spider plant pup that I've been trying to propagate because they're super easy to propagate that she targets. And literally anytime I know that she's been pissed or if I've been gone from the house too long, I will be like, okay, the house is, is fine. Nothing's ripped up. No one puked anywhere. Not that they normally do, but you know, I've lived with pets my whole life. So I know you can never know what you come home to. And then I start looking at my plants to be like, okay, is everything fine? Yep, yep, yep. And then I look over, <laughs> it's the same one every goddamn time. This poor pup is uprooted from its its nursery pot and it's still alive. They're pretty hardy, they're pretty hard to kill, but I still feel so bad because I'm like, that poor plant is going through so much trauma. And then also she just flat cuts all of my spider plants, especially the pups. So normally spider plants will like kind of creep, they're called spider plants because they look like spider legs, creep out over their pot. <laughs> It's like you came with like a, a buzz cut thing and just went Meh, right across my, my pups. All of them are flat topped because she will just chew off the top. <sighs> but they're still alive. It's wild. Desi. Yeah. 
I'm trying to leave as much of this part of my eye open as possible because that's where we're gonna be packing the green. If I need to, I can go in with concealer and blank it out again, but I'm honestly too lazy to do that. So now we're gonna be dipping into the Sage of the Day palette in the shade Keep Calm this guy right there and this one will just be like I said in the area the majority of my lid and for that I am gonna go in with I think I'm gonna go in with a flat shader brush at first just to pack the color on with more precision tilt my head back and then we're gonna act like we're cutting the crease so really kind of tilting my head back so I get as much of that open space as possible and swiping the color on and kind of packing it in versus like windshield wiper motions I'm going back in again and again to grab more product to just build up the color. And then I think once I get this set, I'll go in with my finger and just apply more of that pigment right away. Cause it's not a super dark pigmented green. It is this nice kind of minty, almost pistachio color. And then I'm just gonna apply some with my finger, especially near the lash line. I have a hard time getting color to stick near my lashes. And then no additional product. I'm gonna go in with the fluffy blending brush and just kind of go around where I apply that color. Going back into the Gone Matte palette, we are now gonna go into Very Velveteen and Cushion Cut, which are the two colors underneath what I was using. Continue darkening up the crease and outer corner. Other plants that I have and love, my Monstera, those are good beginner plants. Mine's exploding quite a bit. Croton, those are bitches. I'm never, I don't think I'll get one of those again. I'm really sad, I found out like I think last week so we have the bay window and there's a cushion on there for the cats to lay on in the sun and occasionally our dog will get up there too and she got up there and knocked an entire head of the croton off and those are also very they're gorgeous like fall looking plants but they require a ton of sun and they i i just don't live in a state that can give them that year round during the summer, yes, not during the winter. Even with the grow lights that I have and being in the bay window all day, every day. Yeah, I don't think I would get that one again. I could be wrong. I think they're gorgeous. They're just really hard to care for in my state. Sansevieria, snake plants are easy to care for. Those are ones that you can like literally forget about and they will still push out babies. I have one that I got from my mom that's really tall and it's still alive, but it's pushed out a baby that I propagated and now there's another one being pushed out that I'll propagate once that's large enough to separate from the mother plant. All right, now going in with Cushion Cut. All right, I'm gonna go back and blend a little bit more. It's looking a little, <laughs> a little choppy there. Switching over to talking about wedding planning. If anyone has any tips for wedding planning, please let me know that aren't Tips that are not, oh, DIY. Oh, ask your friends and family to do everything for you. Oh, get a discount or discontinued dress. Like, I, I know all these things, I understand. Like, my plan already was to get a secondhand dress just because it would be cheaper and less environmentally impactful. But <laughs> we're using the website, The Knot, and then we also referenced The Wire. And luckily I'm at an age where a lot of my coworkers and peers either are getting married or have gotten married recently. So they have a lot of input and advice, which I'm really appreciating. And then sometimes also they have things that we can use for our wedding. And we got engaged a week and a half ago. If you guys would like a separate video on that story, let me know. Um, I kind of want to just make one again, because most these videos are mostly for me to look back on almost as a video scrapbook. I enjoy having you guys here and commenting. I do really love growing our community, but it's more so for me to look back on what I was doing with my life in these moments of time. So I might just record and talk about how the in proposal happened and everything and because it's like I said it's a very us story but we hope to get married this October so like seven months and we both know we want a fall wedding we don't want to do it next year because his, one of his cousins is getting married next October and we don't want to detract from their day nobody's doing anything this October and so it just feels like we have a fire under our butt and we're both very planned out people we both like to make Google Spreadsheets, Google Docs, everything with our resources. And so we have that going. <laughs> All right, sorry. Going in with the Flight Club palette from Menagerie Cosmetics, we're gonna be using the shade Flighty. And this is just more of a punchy purple that you might see like with the Calafia Dotty. Feel free to stop here if you like this more, less punchy shade arrangement. 
I think I'm gonna go in with a kind of pointed pencil brush. This is that punchier purple. Yeah, you can see that huge difference like just right away. It has more of that magenta undertone, punchy versus that gray undertone. And I think it's really pretty. But yeah, if you guys have any input on weddings or what to do, it's one of those things where it's like at the end of the day, yes, we just want to get married, but we both agree like you, hopefully with us, I don't care if other people have been divorced or married more than once, but hopefully for us, this is our only wedding, our only marriage. And so we want to have our dream wedding to look back on, but don't want to spend a fortune. I think in America, the average wedding cost is around 30000 30,000 and so we just need to find a way to do as much by ourselves while still getting what we want and getting the experience that we want to have. I always think about when we have kids having them look at our wedding pictures and being like wow mommy and daddy were so beautiful. Not that we wouldn't be <laughs> when we're older but you know kids are brutal but I want them to be like wow that's amazing like my hope is that my our kiddos will look at us and be like, my parents are what love is. They're a great example of it. And I, I think it would be fun for them to see, like, I definitely am an alternative kind of person. So like, we're not going to a church. We're not, we're not religious at all. I might even get a black wedding dress. So things that are still kind of by the book, as far as like venue, caterers, bar, food, like whatever, for typical American culture weddings, Caucasian culture weddings, while still being a little bit personalized. I think my, I, I would love for our kiddos to like look at our pictures and being like, my parents are badass. They're cool. Yeah, I don't know. So if you guys have any tips for wedding planning, especially really fast wedding planning, please leave them down below. All right, so that's with that purple in there. I have a little bit of a gap almost seemingly right there and that's for a reason. I am gonna go back in and just kind of, again, diffuse and blend out the colors here. Maybe not the best idea to wear this kind of look to a venue, but you know what? They're gonna get what they get. It's my wedding, I'll be paying for it. So you guys can take it and shove it. I'm gonna go back in with that green shade, Keep Calm from the Stage of the Day palette and just kind of redefine that area sometimes with the blending it can get a little lost okay and then i am going to be using a ColourPop super shock shadow in the shade moonwalk i don't believe they make this anymore but i think a close second or close up to what it might the effect would be because it's this duochrome kind of red rusty color to this bright green this will go on top of where the green was. The green is just kind of a base for that. A good similar color that they have now that you can even get at Target would be Rooftop Cocktails, which I also have. I think that one is a little bit more blue toned and orangey versus this like bright green and rusty orange. But this is going all over that green and I'm just using my finger and then kind of dabbing it into that like blank area I left there. And then I'm gonna probably blend again with no additional product, but to redefine some of the colors and make it a little bit more cohesive, going back in with all the brushes I had before and just blending that up a little bit. And then for brow bone highlight, I'm just gonna be using a matte shade from the Gone Matte palette, a matte's My Skin Tone shade color in the shade You're a Faux. So the shade right there, and that'll just go in the brow bone. One of my tips for if you feel like your eyeshadow has gotten a little bit too blown out, a little too spread out, is to take a color in either eyeshadow or face powder that is a shade very similar to your skin tone and buffing it around the edges that you, that you feel have gotten a little bit too out of the way. So like I might even do some down here and that'll help almost shrink up the area that you've created with your shadow and clean it up a little bit more so it doesn't look as smoky if that was not your intention. And then for inner corner, I'm gonna start with the shade Lit Vibes in the Stage the Day palette, so this one right here. And I'm going to be taking just a little bit more of a pointed pencil brush again. And then this has, it looks yellow, almost champagne in the palette, but it does have a green undertone to it, which I think is really pretty. Okay, feel free to stop here, but I am gonna take it one step further. Something I've been doing since I saw it on their Instagram is using Phytosurgeon's Fractal Freesia Flash Fluorescence Eyeshadow Pigment in what they call the swoop of your eye. So the inner corner, exactly where I just placed that lighter highlighter shade. I'm gonna be using this shade, Fractal Freesia, 
which again is kind of a colorless base but with suspended glitter shimmer in it. And my rationale behind this is it kind of is supposed to emulate like the water droplets on plants if it rains, if it's humid. And I'm just using the same brush that I used to apply the brow bone shade. And then also I'm gonna go in with my finger, I think actually too. There we go. So that's in my swoop there, as they call it. And so hopefully you can tell a difference. So this side has it, and it's just that beautiful reflective kind of like water droplet-esque. And then this one does not have it. It just has that kind of metallic sheen. Same thing on this side. And then if you feel like you got a little bit too much kind of in your eye bag area, I'm just gonna go in with my setting powder brush and then sweep upwards. So instead of like spreading it, you're just kind of pushing it back where it was and then wiping that off so I don't have any extra glitter. There's that. And now for eyeliner, we're gonna be using a NYX retractable eyeliner in the shade Deep Purple. Let's watch that on the back of my hand here for you. I think I'm gonna, I do have like a smudging liner brush that I'm gonna use because this is a retractable liner and not one with a point like a liquid liner. It might not be as precise as I would like it. So I am gonna go underneath my eye a little bit and then kind of sweep with the angle of my lower lash line up to create a wing. And then I'm gonna pull that inwards to my eye. And then while that is still setting, just taking a teeny tiny pencil brush and further winging that out a bit, creating a sharper point. And then doing the same thing on the other eye. Hopefully I can get them even. I've been having a really hard time getting my liner even. This is my thinking base. All right, I am gonna go put on some mascara. I'm just gonna be using my normal CoverGirl Exhibitionist waterproof mascara, slap on some lashes, and then I will be back. Lashes are the Ardell Faux Mink Wispies attached with Kiss Aloe Strip Lash Adhesive. Lipstick is CoverGirl Demi Matte in Trending with the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in Champagne Glam on top. And this is the finished look. If you want, you can do a more purple lipstick. You could do a nude lipstick. Were you gonna tell me I had lipstick on my teeth? I went with this brown-ish mauve shade just to kind of represent the dirt <laughs> in the plants. We're getting a little too deep here, but let me know if you recreate this look. I really like it. Like I said, it may not be the most appropriate look to wear to a wedding venue tour, but like I said, you know what? They're gonna get what they get. Also, I feel like the biggest like high school art, high school English teacher in this outfit and everything going on. Like those TikToks where somebody's always emulating a teacher and they're just like, mm-hmm, yeah and I work at a school, so I honestly could really see it. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. What is something that you didn't like in your childhood that you do really enjoy now? So for example, for me, this whole thing with plants, I hated plants. Growing up on the West Coast, we had a much different growing climate than we do here in the Midwest. And my mom actually went to college and got a degree in horticulture science. So plants are like her thing. So my entire childhood was inundated with going to nurseries, with garden shows, all those kinds of things. So much so that I, it got to the point that I just could not stand it, hated it. Us stopping at a nursery on the way home from some event meant it was gonna be that much longer until I could play my video games, <laughs> so I hated it. But as an adult, you know, especially during COVID, I got into plants. I think a lot of people tried to pick up a hobby when we were stuck indoors. I did try my hand at bread baking a couple times and that just did not go over well. <laughs> so I, I'm i definitely not perfect with plants. I've definitely murdered my fair share of them. I could probably do some better upkeep on some of them, but for the most part, they're alive. And it's, it's teaching me good lessons to have patience for also myself. With plant care, I think there's also some good life lessons in there like patience and not rushing yourself and worrying about immediate growth because it might just be those teeny tiny little steps that you go from this tiny bud and you don't see your growth every day, but 
but then all of a sudden years down the road you're this beautiful plant or tree so let me know down below something that you're into now or like that you didn't like as a kid it could be something as simple as broccoli maybe as a kid you hated broccoli but now you can eat it no problem whatever thanks so much for joining me today guys and as always i hope you were able to treat yourself with the same kindness that you so easily give to others thanks guys bye god i need to clean my brushes i feel like a disgusting individual but i know i'm not the only one let this be your reminder to go wash your brushes i'm planning on doing that tomorrow go desk go and continue darkening up the crease and the outer. <laughs> uh, that was you. Sorry, Dust, you not like that? Chugga chugga. Highlighter, highlight. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Desi, did you eat it? Ugh. What the f Where did it go? Gremlins, it's right underneath. God, I got this song so bad now. Oh, my body hurts so bad. Fuck off, stop rolling away. Uh. Mailman. All right. Um, thumbnail. I'm gonna be cheesy and grab my monster up. Oh god, my body hurts. Let's pray I'll drop it. Will break anything? Such a dork. We plant babies. These are me children. Doste. What was that? Oh, this has balls in it. <laughs> God damn it. Benjamin! I don't need, I'm not even holding the plants that these are inspired by, but maybe I'll just add pictures in there. So darky. No, don't get a burnt leaf. What's going on? Can I do that? Hold one on either arm? Make it look like I'm not holding it? Totally. Fuck yeah, bud. I did it. We did it. We did it. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm sorry, babies, for moving you around so much. Thank you for being awesome. I love you. Let's put you back where you came from. And I am gonna make a very late lunch. It is 3.30. Oops. All right, well, fare thee well, ogre.